But Harris on the number 37 Honda soon fights his way by for the lead. Sheriffs comes back to challenge him all the way to the chequered flag. Yeah, mate, it's going good. And last night I made a radical decision with front and rear suspension, something I never do prior to a race. Sat down with Robert Taylor from Olin's, pulled the shock apart, made some subtle changes to it. That's heaps better. The bike's awesome. I can ride it faster yet. Uh, Craig just proved the point. I need to ride faster because the man got right on my butt. Well, the zero lead, you know, could have could have taken me at some stage. The second race for the 600 Sports Productions getting underway now. Craig Sheriffs on the pole position. Gets a good start, but look out on the outside of him. Sean Harris in the white Honda pulls right across on Dennis Charlotte and Craig Sheriffs takes the lead clean away from them. Ray Clee, that was an impressive start, wasn't it? Yeah, no, Sean definitely got the advantage there. Not only did he get through cleanly, but he really bought the other guys, and you can see the advantage he's got straight away down the straight there. Bit of a trick to this Timaru circuit by the look of it. Those S's right just after the start finish line make for a pretty interesting race start. You know, that's a really important corner and really important to get right off the start. And uh, Sean certainly did the job there. So Harris out front of this field. Look how much space he grabbed himself there with that great start on one of the few Hondas in the field where Suzuki still seems to dominate just as they do in superbikes this year, Ray. Yeah, Suzuki have had the bike of choice for the last uh, three years, the G6R, but this year the new Honda's up to the task and Sean's doing a great job. Has he got the only one of the new Hondas? I think there's a couple more through the field, but Sean's got the experience and the know-how to get him set up and he's doing the best job with that uh, bike at the moment. Big fight going on here. This is for second place as you see Harris disappearing out of hit. Oh, look at Charlotte just letting the rear end just slide out as he comes down to the S's. And right in behind him, Jared Love on the 69 goes down underneath him. Great passing move as the defending champion sits in behind Craig Sheriffs just watching them at the moment. Yeah, I think these guys are really battling amongst each other and that's uh, going to let Sean get away. So Craig's probably sitting back there thinking, uh, I really need to get past these guys to try and close Sean down, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. That gap's getting pretty big, that's for sure. So a chase is going to have to be uh, started pretty soon. But of course, these guys, as you say, have got their hands full behind them. Now about 100 metres back from Sean Harris, the man who last year made some history, becoming only the second Kiwi to win two races at the Isle of Man, two titles in one year. Graham Crosby, the only guy who's done that before. Yeah, it's great to see Sean having some success there and coming back here to race, and it looks like he's got the race wrapped up here. Surely does. The 39-year-old coming through the S's the last time. Down to the chequered flag to take this one out. His second win for this day. So that's a great day's work. Yeah, no, Sean did a really good job there. And he just built that advantage he took on the start there. So won the race in the first couple of seconds, according to Ray Clear, our expert commentator. As Sean Harris heading down the back straight, you know what's coming next. There it goes. Not a bad wheelie from the little guy. Yeah, no, and here's Dennis doing a little bit of a burnout. He'd be happy with his day's work as well. A couple of useful placings. That's right. A bit of a wheelie here too. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Been a very successful weekend for you. Yeah, it has. Um, like I was just saying, like I just feel really, really confident now. Um, I build off my confidence. The more I win, the more confident I get in my own self. I believe in myself. I believe in my equipment. I believe in all the support I've got. So there's no reason for me not to keep on winning. Yeah, no, that was pretty good, eh? Sean got a good start in that one, almost took everyone down. And then um, it was a bit of a Suzuki dust-up, like you say. There was Craig trying to get in there, and I was running the blocking lines and stuff, and then Dennis was out in front as well. Confirming the win then for Sean Harris, ahead of Jared Love and Dennis Charlotte. Uh, Craig Sheriffs in fourth, James Smith fifth, and Hayden Fitzgerald in sixth. And in the championship, Sean Harris now with the 28-point lead ahead of Jared Love, with Dennis Charlotte third. Craig Sheriffs in fourth, Gary Cunningham fifth, and James Smith sixth. Sunday's first race for the Superbikes features a big three-way battle at the front, with Andrew Stroud eventually muscling his way past early leader Brian Bernard. He goes clear while Ray Clee bumps Bernard back to third. I followed Brian Bernard for you know, two or three laps before I got past him up the inside of the hairpin. And then uh, 
I looked back a lap later and there's, there's quite a gap, you know, I'd, I'd pulled out a bit, so it's a reasonably com comfortable on that one, but uh, they're not always like that, so I'm looking forward to some good racing. The third race of the weekend for the Blue Wing Honda Superbikes getting underway. Pulse at a Ray Clee getting a good start, but look on the outside. That is John Hepburn, the local, on the Aprilia, grabbing the lead away. Great run off the line using the low-down grunt of that bike. Here we are with Brian Bernard looking forward at Andrew Stroud, getting that power down on this fast left-hand sweeper. Look at these bikes accelerate out of here. Cranking it up down this long back straight at Timaru. All up on the right there, you can see the Aprilia doesn't have the legs to run with the Suzuki's down the back straight. So he immediately gets past. So Brian Bernard up to third. Ray Clee out front, Andrew Stroud in second. Despite fast sweeping corners here, and these uh, super bikes really are challenged to get that power down onto the surface. So Andrew Stroud, two wins this weekend already, sitting there in the second place. Let's see what he can do about Ray Clee out front in this one. A view again from Brian Bernard as they work the hairpin and the infield S's. Great shots here. Almost makes you feel a little bit sick seeing the angles these guys get on around the corners. Knee just scraping there with Andrew Stroud. See Stroud's bike just stepping out there a little bit. Probably still cold tyres as they get around this track. This is the S's leading onto the start-finish straight. Quite a competitive bunch forming up there just behind these three. Yes, acceleration through those corners there. Just see the bike stand up onto the back wheel. Johnny Hepburn it looked like just being passed by somebody for fourth place. So he's being bumped back down the order after that sensational start. Oh, that's Michael Smith riding off there. Looks like he may have a problem looking down at the brakes or the tyres maybe. Oh, and our race leader under attack. Ray Clee has Andrew Stroud suddenly all over him and not just all over but past him. Made it look pretty easy down the end of the back straight. He just appeared to get that drive down on that left hand or on that straight and carried it all the way down. Clee, of course, has said that he's actually, oh, look at him run through here, though, very, very fast on this infield section, getting right up behind Stroud again. Could be mounting another attack to take the lead back. Whoa, he's really putting the pressure on him. But this time is running out now, Greg. This is the last lap of the race. And a lapped bike looming up ahead as well. Andrew Stroud, I'm sure, is used to this sort of pressure. As we know, multi-superbike champion here in New Zealand. He'll be used to having guys like Ray Clee. And look at that lap rider just about got in the way then. Oh, Bernie Johnson has got in the way of Ray Clee, that's for sure. Andrew Stroud made no mistakes about it. Just dived on past Bernie Johnson. But Clee thought better of it and settled for second place. Celebrating a clean sweep for the weekend. Andrew Stroud doing a fantastic wheelie for the crowd. Look at this guy wheelie. And Brian Bernard celebrating as well. Saying goodbye to the Timaru fans. And Johnny Hepburn, the local too, joining in. Ray was really pushing it hard and he was out front. And I was trying, you know, best to catch him the whole way through. And finally started closing on him at the end. And yeah, got a good run onto the back straight. And slipstreamed him down the straight and, and got him at the end. But uh, yeah, there's nothing in it. it was, the lap times were really fast, you know, right on lap record pace the whole way through. Yeah, no, I didn't want to stick it under Bernie there, you know, it was, I wasn't really going to catch him to the line. It wasn't, it was a bit risky in there, it's pretty fast and I just settled for second at that stage. Yeah, uh, safe third, uh, not keen to push too hard today after Friday's big crash, so um, not happy with third, but we'll take it for now and, and come away with points, so yeah, looking forward to next weekend. Win three of the day then for Andrew Stroud ahead of Ray Clee and Brian Bernard. Dennis Charlotte on another Suzuki in fourth, followed by John Lowther and Brennan Marshall in sixth. And in the points, Andrew Stroud now with a 15-point lead on Ray Clee, with Brian Bernard in third. Dennis Charlotte fourth, followed by John Lowther and Brennan Marshall. remaining four races all I've got to do is get 10 points which is one sixth place finish out of the remaining four races so I'll start the race tomorrow uh, if I can finish sixth or better great if I can't I'll just wobble around in the second race and get the championship done for my sponsors that's the main thing. Craig Sheriff second behind the Elfin like Harris knows he's only got an outside chance now of retaining his title. I had a crash at Timmer earlier in the year which Really, that, that was the beginning of the end in terms of winning the championship without Sean having some bad luck. Um, yeah, he, he's hurt himself now, but he's in a pretty comfortable position points-wise, so um, we'll, we'll just go out there and try and win as many races as we can and what's left of the season to do a good job for the sponsors and that. But hopefully, um, you know, his bike might break down or something before the first race. It's not over till it's over. In the Suzuki production Superbikes, 
Andrew Stroud has won 10 of the 11 races so far in the championship. So it's been a near perfect season. Yeah, it has so far. So uh, I think I just need a second and a third or so this weekend and that would uh, wrap it up. But, you know, racing's racing. We'll see what happens. The 36-year-old Stroud's run has carried him 65 points clear of teammate and closest rival Ray Clee. Uh, yeah, no, it's been pretty good for the team, one, two, everywhere, except for he's been the one and I've been the two, so we just need to try and reverse that if we can, but we'll see what happens. Brian Bernard still has hopes of getting up with Stroud and Clee in the points. Um, yeah, it's still possible, uh, and again, we're just going to go out and do as well as we can every weekend and try and win all the races we can and, and uh, be there at the end, yeah. Qualifying produces a couple of standout results. Pole position for Dean Fulton on his 750 Honda in his first superbike outing of the season. Yeah. And third fastest time for former New Zealand champion Jason McEwen. Sadly, that's followed up by a freakish crash in second qualifying that leaves the veteran with likely career-ending multiple leg, back and shoulder fractures. Dennis Charlotte leads from the start of the first 600 sports production race, fighting off a big challenge from teammate Craig Shurrups. But lots of attention is focused on the injured Sean Harris and his bid to be champion. Third initially, he's picked off first by Hayden Fitzgerald and then by Craig Gollop. He ends up fifth behind a Charlotte victory. In pain, but with another New Zealand title. Sean Harris, the number one's on the bike. You've done the job you needed to do this weekend. Yeah, thanks very much. Castro Honda, Riker, everybody, Pirelli, that's helped me out. It's been awesome. My main mechanic all season, Steve Wyden, has been fantastic. Yeah, we've won the championship now. Racing's supposed to be fun, but that last one looked like it'd be a fairly painful experience for you. Yeah, it hurt, but the thing is, once the flag drops, you know, your job's on, your mind's on the job. So it was hurting only on the brakes, but I also knew I had a game plan. I knew where I had to be in the race to finish the championship, which if Craig Sheriff had won the race, I'd finished seventh. Uh, uh, sixth, sorry, I would have won the championship by half a point. Um, Dennis Charlotte made my job easier. He went through and beat uh, Craig Sheriff for that race, so that gave me another five points in my favour. There was a couple of young guys like Hayden Fitzgerald. He's another star of the future. He was coming through. Craig Gollop's improved all year, so I didn't want to be the person that was blocking their race so I sort of got out of the way a little bit they caught up to me stay out of their way let them have a good clean race the second race of the day for the blue wing honda 600 sports production bikes now underway and great start there from dennis charlotte on the 15 suzuki has got clear of the number one bike of craig sheriff who had pole position dennis there again a great launch off the line and the start is really critical at this trip such a little track as talpo and not many passing places but look at uh, Sheriff's now all over the back of Charlotte, really trying to put the pressure on him as Sean Harris watches on. He seems amused by it all. Of course, he's won the title now. He doesn't have anything to worry about. Yeah, Sean's probably enjoying himself there, just relaxing and watching the proceedings. No relaxing out front. Dennis Charlotte in the lead of the race, but not by much ahead of Craig Sheriff's, the man who was quickest in qualifying, although there wasn't very much in it, as you can imagine, around this tight little track. A 40-second lap is as good as it gets on the 600s. So, Ray, what sort of pace are the superbikes doing around here? Our superbikes are running in mid-39s, mid-high 39s, so not much quicker. It's, the track's really hard work, and you spend a lot of the time on the edge of the tyre, so you can't get the, all that horsepower to the ground. You can imagine that as you watch them taking the S's. That's Hayden Fitzgerald on the number 32 bike, just ahead of Gary Cunningham. These two having a good battle for about fourth place. Gary and uh, Hayden have been having a good battles all year long and looks like they've continued it here today. Meantime up front, race leader Dennis Charlotte still got that company right behind him. Craig Sheriffs very keen to get ahead of him, but so far not finding a way through, trying down the outside of the hairpin. Oh, don't think that's going to work, Ray. No, but Craig Gollopson there behind looking to pick up any pieces. Yeah, he will be. As they go through the S's, this tracking it very tight. That must really unsight you when you're tracking a bike that tightly through a tra through that part of the circuit. Yeah, it's very hard work getting through there and uh, trying to keep your momentum and change in direction. So the leading rider has the advantage and this man has the work to do. Craig Sheriff's down. Oh, 
Someone's hitting the deck in a big way. That looks like Gary Cunningham there. He looks okay. He's getting up. And the dust pour out of his visor as you saw him standing up but giving it away. And still the fight rages on at the front. One more time taking a look. Now what are his other options here, Ray? I'm not sure. I think uh, Craig will be looking to try and get under Dennis into the sweeper. But uh, Dennis has done a lot of laps around here and he knows how to go fast and he knows how to block. So we'll see what Craig can do. These two all down the outside of them this time. Trying them around the outside. Now that's a different line. Trying to get a good run down the straight. But this is it. The chequered flag looming up. He's not going to do it. This one's going the way of Dennis Charlotte. Takes the win out ahead of Craig Shurif. And Craig Gollop close in behind them. And here's the fight to the line. Derek McAdam and Hayden Fitzgerald. Yeah, those guys will pick up that fourth place. Well, looks like these boys enjoyed themselves. That was a pretty good race between the uh, two Suzuki races out front. No, they both did a fantastic job there. Good racing. Yeah, Craig's, Craig uh, had the pressure on the whole way. So, um, but like I said, I just um, tried to stay as consistent as possible and um, obviously make him do the hard work. He came in pretty closely at one stage, so um, I had to put the hammer down. But um, yeah, no, he's, he was right on the case the whole way. Yeah. Confirming the win then for Dennis Charlotte ahead of Craig Sheriffs and Craig Gollop. Derek McAdam in fourth, Hayden Fitzgerald in fifth, Kerry Bryan in sixth. In the point standings, Harris, of course, unbeatable ahead of Craig Sheriffs and Dennis Charlotte. Then it's Hayden Fitzgerald, Craig Gollop and Gary Cunningham. As Dennis Charlotte hits the lead early on in the production superbike race one, Daniel Ormsby hits the deck. The race continues on with a big fight between Dennis Charlotte on the number six machine and Brian Bernard, with Bernard eventually going ahead. Then coming under pressure from Andrew Stroud on the number one machine, Stroud though drops back into Charlotte's clutches in the race to the line. It's won though by Brian Bernard. Brian Bernard, lots of Taupo experience coming to the fore this morning. Yeah, um, I've done quite a few laps around here. I don't know that, that that's too much to do with today. First time I've ridden a big bike around here in anger. But um, no, it's, it's good to come out with a win. The second race for the Superbikes here at Taupo finds pole sitter Dean Fulton on the outside. Now he's pulled a bit of a Swifty there maybe on his Honda. Very, very quick. It's only a 7.50 but very well suited to the Taupo track. But it hasn't served him well off the start line. So he chose the outside line, but it's Brian Bernard and the other two Suzukis of Ray Clee and Andrew Stroud who've got away quicker than him. This looked like those GSX-R thousands just got the power down off the line and managed to pull away. There's the Honda tucked in there. This is an unusual sight to see anything else but Suzuki up front in these superbike races this season. But now Ray Clee's really got his hands full with Dean Fulton coming around the outside of him and makes it stick around the sweeper. Let's take a look at the start again. Here we are on board with Brennan Marshall from 7th place in the grid. Looking over to John Lowther down the right-hand side there. Under brakes in there on the inside. Oh, there goes number 38, John Forwell, taking him around the outside. Up front, our race leader Brian Bernard under some intense pressure there from Dean Fulton. Then it's back to this group led by Andrew Stroud running in third. So the Suzuki's there. Ray Klee tucked up behind him as well. Yes, these two have got a battle on their hands. The two up front clear away. Bit of a gap established now. Good fight going on here as well. John Falwell tracked by our onboard race bike. That's Brendan Marshall. And here's the view as he goes through the S's. Just check it out and listen to it. Big handful of these bikes around here. Something like 180 horsepower on some of these machines. And really trying to get the power down and keep it upright. <laughs> Look at this Whoa. down the inside. <laughs> nice move. And it's stuck. That was John Falwell. He just passed down the inside then. Here's the group we're travelling with, John Lowther in the lead on the 41 bike, then Brendan Marshall on the number 10, and John Falwell now tracking him. It's Brendan Marshall looking down the end of the main straight, into that left hand, off camber going through here, just sneaking up the outside there, getting the power down, not quite. Marshall really trying hard to get past Lowther, getting very, very tight here in the S's. Imagine how tough it is riding these bikes that have got this much horsepower and on that light and on this little tight track. This double apex here going up wide and then cutting down the inside. Nice move down the inside. Oh, and Lowther's almost caught up by John Forwell as well. Look at up front. Brian Bernard suddenly got Andrew Stroud and Dean Fulton all over him. And Stroud's got through on Fulton. 
Yes, the RC45 of Fulton looking a little bit more nimble here around the corners. Whoa, get a bit of tail slap there. They got it back together pretty well, though. Yes, he wasn't going to give in to Andrew Stroud, but in the end he had to. And now Stroud sets off after Brian Bernard in pursuit of the race lead. Yes, watch Fulton, though. I can think he, he's really going to come on strong now. But obviously, the tyres and everything working in his favour. Just a lighter bike, a little bit more nimble. Oh, Stroud's coming on strong, though. Brian Bernard stands it up as he heads down the straight, takes a look. And there's good reason to take a look as Andrew Stroud comes down the inside of him. Showing that class again, Andrew Stroud just taking his time to come through to the front. So, so experienced this guy, been around for a long time, 36 years old. Still a very, very top-notch racer. Here comes Fulton at Bernard, trying round the outside of the hairpin and going to steal it away at the entry to the S as well, is he? Yes, I think this time he will. Yes, holding it in there, just keeping it nice and tight through the infield. Great pass. So the 750 showing the way in the handling department here at Taupo to the bigger 1,000 bikes. Here we are with Stroud now with Fulton all over him, but it's going to be too late. This is the run to the chequered flag. Andrew Stroud takes this one out. Yes, Dean Fulton coming in second, Brian Bernard right behind him in third, and Ray Cleet in fourth place. Andrew Stroud, the title's all wrapped up, three in a row for you? Yeah, it's three in a row. Uh, six all together over the years, but yeah, it's good. Strong ride in that last race, managed to get through to the front. Yeah, I felt a bit better in that second race than I did in the first, and uh, so it was good racing. All the other guys are really going well. You know, Brian and Dean and Ray, you know, they're all riding good and it's not easy, but it, it, that's the way it's enjoyable. So confirming the win for Andrew Stroud ahead of Dean Fulton and Brian Bernard. Ray Clee in fourth, followed by Brendan Marshall and Dennis Charlotte coming in sixth. And in the championship standings, Andrew Stroud has now put the championship beyond the reach of everyone else. Ray Clee in second, Brian Bernard third. Dennis Charlotte in fourth, followed by Jason McEwen and John Lowther in sixth. Both road race titles are already decided going into the Manfield finale of the Mike Perro Motorsport Series. But there are still new challenges to be faced. Brian Bernard, for instance, is not giving up hope of tipping Ray Klee for second place in the Suzuki Superbikes. No, not yet. It's too early to give up the, the battle for second. Um, there's still a mathematical chance of finishing second, so that's the goal this weekend. Yeah, and no, I've got a little bit of lead on Brian. Um, if I can beat him in the first race tomorrow, then um, leaves the second race open and we can see what we can do, try and get a win on Andrew again. Others just want to end the season on a high note. See how we go. I've got fourth place pretty well secure, so um, I'll just go out there and try as hard as I can. And um, if we come off trying or, or have, have another failure, that's the way it is. But um, you know, I really want to give it a good go this weekend. And in the Blue Wing Honda 600 Sports Production class, Yamaha rider Craig Gollop and Kawasaki's Kerry Breyer join the established stars on top of the timesheets. Yeah, awesome. The, uh, the, guys, uh, the other guys have picked up the pace and they seem to be uh, right there with us in this last round. Looks like there's about five or six of us there with, within uh, half a second um, on the grid, which is going to be really awesome to watch. With new champ Sean Harris nursing his injuries and Craig Sheriff out after qualifying, there are opportunities to be had here. That's right, yeah, with, with Sean out, um, you know, it gives uh, us guys a chance and, and I think all of us have developed um, our race craft through the season and um, we're all going a lot faster. Certainly at the front end of the field, there's some good times being put down. Um, track's a wee bit slippery, but um, yeah, the guys are pulling out some good times, so it's good to see. And everyone's facing another challenge. Strong winds that buffet the bikes. And if you get hit by a side wind, when you're on one wheel, it really, you know, blows you off onto the side and you've got to shut the throttle off pretty quickly. And sometimes, you know, you can try and blow the front wheel out, turning into a corner, but if you get hit hard enough by wind. I don't really notice it a lot. Um, uh, coming from Wellington, riding, driving vans and things and bikes, you know, the wind, wind's there, so it, it didn't really affect me myself. In the damp opening 600 sports production race, early leader Dennis Charlotte is eventually picked off. First by the Kawasaki mounted Kerry Breyer, and then by Craig Gollop on his Yamaha. The upper hut rider goes on to dive under Breyer on the last corner to take the victory.
Oh, yes. Oh, it was, it was awesome. Um, I um, caught him up um, lap after lap, and on that last lap, I knew I had to get him to either the second or last corner or the last corner. Uh, the last corner was he went in really fast, so I had to go a bit faster, and um, then we found ourselves shoulder to shoulder. We actually touched and felt the wind touching, and um, I um, it was just the adrenaline heart in your mouth stuff and just held the line and um, got through, and I'm really wrapped. Ready to start the second of the 600 sports production races here at Manfield. On pole position, Craig Gollop not getting such a great start. It looked like Craig Scherff's who got a jump. No, Dennis Charlotte jumping out there. Yeah, no, Dennis is pretty good off the start, and he's just got the edge on the guys there. And he's got the lead of the race. No Sean Harris in this race. Harris sitting this one out, having wrapped up the title and uh, nursing his uh, broken bones. So Charlotte out front of this one. Who is going to chase him down? Yeah, we're on board here with Derek McAdam, and he's looking to get past Matt Ford just ahead of him here. Coming down to the hairpin, that sun strike pretty bad just at the moment. Late afternoon sun here at Manfield. Tucks in behind the Honda. Now tries to slingshot past. Is he going to get him? Yeah, no, Derek got a good drive out of there, and he's just put past into the run into Higgins. Craig Gollop in the second place on his Yamaha, sitting there just turning into the Higgins now. And the Kawasaki, bit of a mixed field here at the moment. Kerry Bryer around the outside there. Yeah, no, Kerry looked, took the high and wide line there, but he's got the drive down and he's trying to close down to Craig here. Really competitive bunch tucked in there as well. Number 32, Hayden Fitzgerald, the young New Plymouth rider, still in his teens. Pretty promising young guy, I think, Ray. Yeah, Hayden's coming along really well. He's been taking a few small steps and now he's really starting to come to the front. Certainly caught up in a big fight here. This one led by Craig Gollop out front. Just getting a little bit loose there under brakes as he comes down to turn one. And this is back on board with Derek McAdam taking his chance and diving down the inside. I think that was Fitzgerald he just got. Hayden hey, looked like he ran a bit wide there. So this big battle continues. The intermark rivalry very strong. The Honda's been dominant in the hands of Sean Harris. At the moment, Dennis Charlotte out front of this group and running away with it on his Suzuki. But these guys are having a very good fight. Yamaha versus Kawasaki versus Suzuki as well. Yeah, it's really good to see the other brands there and these guys are starting to come to the front of the field now. Looks like Fitzgerald might have uh, Derek McAdam back again, that uh, travelling in close company as they took the hairpin. Yes, he's gone through, so he moves up a place. But Gollop's doing a good job at the front of this bunch. Yeah, Craig's really got his Yamaha wound up and he's looking to pull ahead of this bunch behind him, fighting over third. Here's the view from Derek McAdam again, just tucked in behind these guys, coming onto the front straight. Not close enough, though, to mount a challenge as these two having a big fight. Fitzgerald on the right, Kerry Breyer on the left. We're interesting to see if Derek can close him down into here under brakes. Looks like he's got a bit wide, actually. <laughs> the kiss of death. Just what you didn't need to say as he was concentrating on a passing move. Craig Gollop, still this line, though. There's nothing between them. What is it that's carried someone like Dennis Charlotte way ahead of these guys and Sean Harris on other occasions when it's so tight and competitive in this bunch. I think, you know, once you get in a group situation, you're all fighting to get your own line and you never end up getting your own line and you just end up battling the whole way. But it's all, it's really great fun and the guys look like they're enjoying themselves out there. So you just lose ground on the guy up front. Here's a move from McAdam. He's, oh, well, it spoke too soon. He hasn't got him yet. Hayden's not given in. No, he hasn't. But time's running out for these guys. Looks like Gollop it is, is going to lead these guys to the chequered flag. Only one corner to go. And here we go, the race winner, Dennis Charlotte. Yeah, Dennis has done a good job there and has got a good victory. These guys are fighting for the finish now. Yes, McAdam tracking Fitzgerald to the line, so he has to settle for that fifth place. And it's Gollop who takes second. Dennis, you moved into second place in the championship this weekend. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, unfortunately for Craig, uh, he couldn't ride these last last two rounds or he probably would have uh, got second, but that's just the way racing goes, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm really wrapped. That was really good adrenaline then. The oil in the um, infield, I was keeping my eye on that. More time thinking about the oil than, than actually riding at time. I just, my eyes are flat out on the track. You can see the sparkle of the oil from the cars that they've left. So a runaway win for Dennis Charlotte, ahead of Craig Gollop in second and Kerry Breyer third. And Hayden Fitzgerald fourth, Derek McAdam fifth and Gary Cunningham sixth. In the final point standing, Sean Harris with 278 points ahead of Dennis Charlotte with Craig Sheriff third. Craig Gollop, Hayden Fitzgerald and Gary Cunningham.
Brian Bernard and Dennis Charlotte get to the front in the opening superbike race. But after a few laps, Ray Klee powers on by, leaving them to fight with Andrew Stroud. Klee goes clear by almost seven seconds for the win, ahead of Stroud and Charlotte. Ray Klee, that was, the, that was the win you wanted. Yeah, no, I really needed to get that win just to seal second place, so I can sort of relax now for the second race and see if we can do it again. Andrew Stroud sitting on pole, ready for the second superbike race of the day here at Banfield. Alongside of him is teammate Ray Klee, and then yet another Suzuki, Brian Bernard on that one. Now Bernard gets a good start, Stroud gets really bogged down, Ray Clear good start as well. Looks like though uh, Dennis Charlotte has come through there in the number six bike into second. So the two guys who are one, two on the start grid bump back to third and fourth. Yes, these front guys, a lot of experience amongst the four of them actually in their 30s, but good start from all four. Brian Bernard leading, Dennis Charlotte in second. Charlotte of course riding in the 600 sports production as well, so he's got plenty of track time at the moment. Brian Bernard from Monganui doing a fantastic job up front to start with. Finished second to Andrew Stroud in last season's championship. Yes, and Bernard won one race at Talpo, so looking to back that up with another one here to finish the season off. Dennis Charlotte looking good, though, at the moment, getting up close there to Bernard. Good riders track, Manfield. Opportunity here, like a Higgins corner. A bit of banking gets an opportunity to get the power right down. Look at that acceleration down the back straight. Ray Clee powering around the outside of his teammate, Andrew Stroud, who came down inside of him there into Higgins that time. So Clee sitting in third place, Stroud back in fourth. Yes, that battle for second place, really hot. The three of them really dicing in their heart. Stroud coming around the outside that time. It looks like he's got the place away from Ray Clee now. Well, wait for it, let's see. Dennis Charlotte right there in the midst of that. And yes, Stroud has got them both. That's a great move from him. Look at Ray Clee coming down the inside, getting that tight line. A little bit of cement dust on the track there. But look at that drive out there, up to third place. Another good fight going on here, just back behind that big fight. This is Brendan Marshall and John Lowther having a good battle. Marshall in the lead of it at the moment. Up front, the battle's fierce. Brian Bernard takes a look over his shoulder. Which way is Andrew Stroud going to go? Down the inside, mate. Here I come. Uh, Stroud trying that move. Oh, a little bit squirrely on the brakes there, but he makes it stick. Nice move into the lead. Ray Clee now right on the back of Bernard as well. He'll be looking to see if he can get by too. Yes, tight battle here, and this is what makes this superbike racing fantastic. Watch, there goes Clee down the outside, front of Bernard. So second place to Ray Clee, so the teammates first and second. So Stroud out front. And look at this fight still going on. John Lowther now coming on down the inside of Brendan Marshall. No, Marshall chops back on him and takes the line away. Oh, just about high side of it there. John Lowther looks around like, what the hell was that? But Pat gave himself a bit of a fright, I think, just there. Oh, look at this. Ray Clee's got past Andrew Stroud. These two, of course, teammates. And, and actually, Ray Clee builds the engines for both these bikes. So these guys up front, similar power. Look at this, though. Stroud says no longer. Comes down the inside of him onto turn one. Oh, and Clee tries to come back at him. Very loose, but manages to hang on to it. Now sling slots around the outside. What a great finish to this race. Coming down to the last corner. Andrew Stout steals it away. Klee trying down the inside. What a way to finish a season. The teammates fighting all the way to the chicken flag. They're showing a bit of trust in each other here, but will Ray Klee get round the outside? No. What a way to finish the season for Andrew Stroud. Brian Bernard here coming through for third place. The last race of the year then to Andrew Stroud ahead of Ray Klee and Brian Bernard in third. Dennis Charlotte coming home fourth, followed by Brendan Marshall and John Lowther in sixth. And in the championship, Andrew Stroud ends up 84 points ahead of Ray Clee for the win, with Brian Bernard in third. Dennis Charlotte comes in fourth, followed by John Lowther and Brendan Marshall in sixth.